Hey, this is Troutbit. Thanks for joining me. So we all love the fishing gear, right? Everybody loves the stuff. And today I want to walk through probably the most overlooked piece of gear that we all have out here. Everybody has a wading belt, but let's rethink the wading belt. So I'll show you the belt I use, but really it's a whole carrying system that I've kind of built around the belt. So if you fish long enough, you kind of find your own systems. You find your own ways of fishing, you find your own ways of carrying things. And I'm happy to show you this wading belt, how I kind of like to carry my stuff. And you might use this whole system, or you might just grab a couple things that seem to work for you and sort of uh, flex them into the way that you already do things. I will say, I, I wrote an article uh, called Let's Rethink the Waiting Belt over on Trout Pitten four years ago. And I looked back and I realized I'm still using the exact same stuff, the same system. And that's how you know, I mean, if you stop looking for something better, then you know you already have everything you need. All right, are you ready for this? Here we go. All right, my buddy Matt Grobe said not too long ago that you don't want to let your tools dictate how you'll fish. Of course, you want to do it the other way around. You want to decide how you want to fish and how you want to carry things, and how all of that can work together, and that's how you build your system. So that's a great point because you might build a whole system, kind of have everything set the way you think you're going to have it set. Then you realize that you have no efficient way to carry your, your net or your wading staff or your water bottle becomes an afterthought. So this wading belt system came about through necessity because I use my belt to carry the heavy stuff. Let me show you the belt first. All right, here it is. This is a two inch, two inch belt, super sturdy. The material hardly flexes and it does not stretch, right? Good clasp, attachment, that's nice. The point is, it can carry a lot of weight. There's another thing, I mean, it's adjustable of course, but there's no buckle to stop that adjustment. So here's my camera, and I'll show you all the stuff that I have attached here in a minute. But this will slide back and forth. That's really important to me. That's a big part of the system. So I don't want anything right here that stops this from sliding back and forth. So it's a military grade belt. I don't know, this one's, uh, this one's made by Blackhawk. And I think you can find them from other companies. Uh, law enforcement and military personnel use stuff like this all the time. So the belt, of course, is really the key part of the whole system. Now most waders come with a belt that looks something like this. This is all right, this is fine. This will keep water out. You really should wear a belt all the time, just for safety. Keeps your waders from filling up. I think we all know that. This is a decent belt, but again, it can't really support any weight. You can see, I mean, it's too flexible. If you even hang a water bottle off of it, like this, it just sags down. So it can't support weight, but I wear this uh, when I'm in a boat. When I'm in a boat, I don't need to carry all this stuff. I can just lay it down in the boat. So, it's a fine option, it's a good option. It's stretchy, so it's a fine option. Now, importantly, this is kind of nice for this style of belt, because if I do have something light on here, I can slide around, there's no buckle. The adjustment is up here. The adjustment buckler, whatever we're gonna call that, is up here. Here's what I mean. Here's another style. This one's real flimsy. And this, again, is gonna prevent you from sliding things around. Sometimes that's important to a system. Now, Sims makes a couple belts. This is the one they used to make. It's a good design. It's a sturdier material. And you can hang stuff off of this. You can put a water belt on this. But you can see it's not nearly as sturdy as the Blackhawk belt that I use. So it can only support so much. But it's a good option for, let's say, light and medium things hanging off of it. This kind of pops open a little too easy for me, so I don't love it. But you could slide things around because, again, the, the adjustment's up front. Here's, <laughs> here's my old wading belt. Now, I had this for eight or nine years. This is the same as the Blackhawk that I just showed you. The only reason I replaced it is I bought a second one just for a saltwater setup, and now I've been using the new one. But, I mean, you could see the wear. But that's eight or nine years of fishing a lot. And they really hold up, maintain that stiffness. 
So a neoprene belt could be another option. Sims makes one that's decent. It, it'll give you some support. Uh, it'll be sturdy enough, again, to hang some things off of it. Basically, if, when things are stretchy, you can't hang as much off them. You need sturdiness to be able to hang stuff off them and then also be able to slide, slide around. Another thing to think about is integrated wading belts. More and more waders are coming with an integrated wading belt. You know, right back here, it'll be built into the wader itself. I hate them. I really do. When I have a pair of waders that has the integrated wading belt, I just cut the belt off. I don't want the fishing company to decide for me how I want my belt system to be laid out. You'll see in a minute why the integrated wading belt will not work with my, uh, my favorite way of carrying my net and so many other things. Even belt loops are very, very common. Uh, on waders these days, and I just ignore them. Sometimes I cut them off, but mostly I just ignore them. I do not use the belt loops because again, I can't slide things around on this belt. So I keep talking about a sturdy wading belt. Why do I need that? Because I'm hanging the heavy, I'm carrying all the heavy stuff on my hips instead of my shoulders. Hikers know that, military guys know that. Again, law enforcement, everybody who has to carry heavy stuff is gonna carry it on their hips. Once you do it for a while, you spend some long days on the water and you realize pretty quickly it's just better to carry that weight on your hips, not on your shoulders. So the whole system is really built for that. I keep a lot of stuff in my vest, right? We went through that in another whole video. But the vest is not that heavy because all of the stuff I'm gonna show you right here is on my hips. So I carry two pounds of water with me almost every day, especially in the summer. I'm gonna need more water than that. Eight, 10 hour day, I need a lot of water. The waiting staff, this is important, on my hips. We did a full video on this too, and I'm gonna say there's no better way to carry a waiting staff. I'm real open-minded about a lot of things. This is one. I don't think you can do it any better way. You saw when I was showing you how I want this slidable. The camera's in here. I'll show you this in a minute. Cameras are heavy. If you're carrying a full camera, it needs to be waterproof, and you wanna be able to slide it back and forth. I certainly don't want that weight on my shoulders. There's a gimbal in here. No, I don't carry this every day, but a gimbal for the camera is in here. Then I have a tripod in here. These are nice, these are nice cases. You can find a lot of this stuff at like military surplus. Here's the tripod. Military surplus stores, things like that. Um, anything with these molly straps, these are fantastic. Look how that's attached. And adjustable, and slides real nice. Sturdy fabric, durable fabric. and all of that weight then is on my hips. Hey, this video is sponsored by our good friends over at Precision Fly and Tackle. They're a family-owned fly shop staffed by a dedicated group of anglers who know their stuff. Precision has a great online shop and they have physical stores in Pennsylvania and Maryland as well. Precision Fly and Tackle carries the largest selection of rods, reels, lines, leaders, flies, and accessories, along with a fly tying section that never stops growing. From the beginner to the advanced angler, Precision Fly and Tackle can outfit every angler, no matter their budget. So I've been working with Precision for many years now. They've been a great trout pitting supporter, and I hope you'll return the favor. Go visit them online at precisionflyandtackle.com and use the code TROUTPITTEN10 for 10% off your next order. Tell Justin and the crew over there that Trout Pitten sent you. All right, like I said in the beginning, you kind of have to find your own system. Think about your goals and figure it out. Figure out what's gonna work for you. Now this works for me because I'm a wade fisherman. Primarily, I wade, I love fishing the long days. I'm also pretty obsessed with efficiency because I learned a long time ago that if it isn't easy, you won't do it. So let's just kind of walk through. Here's the water. Water bottle, Nalgene water bottle. Old school, right? But it's right back there on the clip. Easy to get to. Water filtration systems out here, that's great. It's fine if you want to do that. This is easier for me. I don't like a bladder system. Well, I really don't. I did that for a little while. I had a pack that had the bladder. It's just a lot more messing around than this. Okay, so that works. Uh, the waiting staff, again, we did a full video about this. So I won't run through the whole thing. But I can keep it like I had there behind, behind the net all day when I don't need it. And then maybe for a couple hours, I'm thinking I'm gonna need it. So it's right there, always right here, retracts right back to the belt. And again, the weight then of the waiting staff is on, on my hips. That's good. Here's the camera. I said earlier, I said over and over how I needed to, everything to be slidable back and forth. There's a big difference with the camera being there and then here. 
It slides around real easily on that belt because it's sturdy. And then in here, this, this pack, this is an ape case. Not the perfect system for carrying a camera, but not bad. This is pretty quick. That, the padding there protects the camera. And then this roll top without my rubber band in there. This roll top, waterproof bag, protects the camera. Pretty efficient there, not perfect, but slides back into position. When I need the tripod, if I need the tripod, it's here. Again, slidable so I have access to it. Much easier to pull it out when it's here on my hip rather than behind me. Not my favorite tripod, but decent. And then what I use most, hopefully, is the net right there. Easy. This is a Smith Creek net holster. I love this net holster. Catch fish right there. It really can't be easier. And the weight of the net then is on my hips. I, I mean, for a decade, I had the weight of the net on my shoulders. This is a big, there's a, that's a big difference right there. All right, there it is. This is the whole wading belt system, carrying system. That system catches me more fish. It's funny because I said the same thing in the vest video, but I mean it. By being efficient, and especially in this case, having all the weight on my hips, now I have more energy. They absolutely have more energy to fish for longer. And because everything's right there and efficient, I can make the changes. I don't mind. I don't mind making the changes. It's all right there. So that's my system. That's the way that I like to do it. Again, you're going to take what works for you, take pieces and parts and work them into your system. But again, think about it. Think about how you want to carry stuff. Don't let those tools dictate how you're going to fish. Think about how you're going to fish and then work your carrying system around it. I hope that works for you. Fish hard, friends, and have fun out there.